Woohoo! It is so good to see you. I see some familiar names of people that are joining us on the webinar live. Thank you so much for being there. I see some new names. That's exciting too. Today we are talking about an introduction to iridology. And we're just going to give Instagram, I forgot to hit the start button for Instagram, we're going to give them just a little minute to, um, to come on board. And we're going to flip the camera around so they can see the screen. There we go. Okay, so we're talking about an introduction to iridology. And Penny says, happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, Penny, so good to, to meet you. I don't think we've met before, so I'm glad you're with us today. That's exciting. As we talk about this introduction to iridology, it's really important for you to know a few things as, as sort of groundwork going into this. There are many kinds of iridology. There are many philosophies and our focus today specifically is the most up-to-date version of iridology, which is called constitutional iridology. This one is scientifically validated. There are new studies being done. There's actually one that's been ongoing for about three or four years in California with a naturopath there. And it's very exciting to see this ongoing validation happening. My original training is that about 40 years ago, I started as a holistic health practitioner. And my original training in iridology was what we would call Jensenian iridology. Uh, that got to be very frustrating. And after about oh, five or six years, I started thinking this isn't working. And by about the 10 year mark, I was blessed to actually link up with some constitutional teachers. And that really was just a brilliant thing. I got frustrated with the old school style, the Jensenian style, because they were really stressing that you could diagnose from the eye. And they were, um, they were saying that the eyes would change dramatically if we did a cleanse or used the right herbs. And I didn't see any of that. It felt very unholistic to me. And so constitutional, on the other hand, was very holistic. It involved conversation with my client. It involved understanding who they were and what their lives were to be able to actually be able to create programs. So today we are going to be looking at four particular questions. What is iridology? Why does it work? What can it teach us? And how should it be used? So again, my name is Judith Cobb. I am a master herbalist, a natural nutrition clinical practitioner, a certified iridologist, and a certified comprehensive iridology instructor. I am the mom of seven, the grandma of eight, and the wife of one. And again, I've been a holistic health coach for 40 years. And I've been a holistic health instructor for 35 years. So I've been around a while. Hello, those of you who are joining us on Instagram. So good to see you. When we are looking at what is iridology, and hello, Melva, good to see you too on, on our webinar. We, what we see here is we are looking at the iris of the eye, and that's what iridology is. We are looking at the iris of the eye. It's funny how a new client will come in and I'll, they're not familiar with iridology yet, and I'll ask them if it's okay if I take photographs of their eyes, and they'll go, well, I just had my eyes checked last month, they're just fine. It's like, well, I'm actually not checking your vision. I want a photo of your iris because it's going to give us some more information. So we're looking at the iris of the eye and we are looking at how the fibers are laying in the eye. If we can see fibers, we're looking at different colors. We're looking for different structures. Now, it's also important that we know how to pronounce this word, right? It's not iridology, it's iridology because it's an iris we're looking at. When we do modern iridology, we actually also typically include the sclera. The iris itself shows us inherent potentials. It shows us how you're put together genetically, where your strengths and weaknesses are. And that's why the iris doesn't change because taking, eating different foods doesn't necessarily change your genetic structure, does it? But the sclera does change. And you've probably noticed that if you've ever seen blood vessels pop up, or if you've ever had a good hard cry in your eyes when bloodshot, that's the sclera changing momentarily, but changing. And so the, we know the sclera does change and we can see changes in that 
more quickly, right? We don't see changes in the iris per se, but we do see changes in the sclera. When we put those together, so we look at the iris, we see what the patterns are, we look at the sclera, we see what's going on there, and then we ask the questions of the client, what symptoms do you want my help with? What health issues would you like my health with? My help with? What would you like to be preventing? Then we can assess what we see in the eyes and what we see in the sclera, because the context here is very, very important. So why does this all work? Well, you probably already know that the eyeball is the largest neural receptor in your body. It's actually, your eye is a part of your nervous system. The iris itself has 28,000 nerve endings. We're not really sure what they all do yet. The eyeball develops embryologically at the same time as the nervous system because it is a part of the nervous system. And what that means is that the brain knows everything. The brain, of course, is the central part of the nervous system. The brain knows everything in your body. It knows where the genetic weaknesses are. It knows where your genetic strengths are. It knows everything. And because of that, what we will typically see is if the brain knows there's a genetic glitch, knows there's a genetic glitch in the body, there will often be some kind of a marker or a tell in the iris because the iris is just an extension of the brain. And again, the challenges that we see, the things that we see in the iris are inherent potentials. They aren't guarantees. This is something that really frustrated one of the early researchers in the early 1900s was as he was looking at eyes, and back then they didn't have great photography, so he was drawing out the eyes that he was looking at, and he was asking about symptoms. He would find that people um, often had a marking, but they didn't have a symptom that went with it. But he knew that some people that had that marking had a particular kind of a symptom or an area of their body that, that was showing some challenges. And he couldn't understand why that was. And it's because the markings we see are inherent potential. You might be doing lots of great things for your health. And because you are, you might be preventing some of those negative potentials from actually manifesting right? Remember when we talk about inherent potential, we're talking about things that have been passed down for three or four generations. So you might see something in your eye and the question that I want, or I might see something in your eye. And the question that I will ask you is, is there a personal or, or family history of? So it's not just about you, it's about your history as well. What can iridology teach us? Iridology, again, we're focusing today on iridology and it teaches us the inherent predispositions. So this eye, for example, and for those of you who are on Instagram, I'm just gonna take my camera a whole lot closer to see if we can give you a better image. There you go. The eye teaches us about inherent potentials and this eye in particular tells us this person spends a lot of time functioning in their sympathetic nervous system. So fight, flight, or freeze. So we see this a lot with people who have anxiety or depression. Um, it doesn't mean they have to have anxiety or depression. It just means we see more people with this sign that have that. That means that this person, for example, burns through uh, their B vitamins, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. So there might be other nervous system involvements here that we need to be aware of. We may want to support this person with a broad spectrum B complex, for instance, or a herbal formula designed for the nervous system. Is that going to make these lines disappear? No, but it's going to nourish this person so they don't have to feel so reactive and so on edge as, as much as they normally do. This person, based on the colors that we're seeing, is predisposed to having his or her liver run the show. I think this is a female actually, um, if I recall properly. And so how's that gonna show up? Because if you ask your client, what liver problems do you have nine times out of 10, they don't have a clue, 
right? They often don't know what liver symptoms are. So we might need to talk about how the liver impacts the, the immune system, how it shows up as blood symptoms that could include a, an unbalanced lipid profile. Um, it could include things like issues with their iron levels. Liver can affect energy. It, we might see allergy symptoms or digestive issues from liver not producing bile, bile not being released, released properly to emulsify fats. So the eye then doesn't actually give us answers. It teaches us what questions to ask. So again, these eyes in particular also suggest a predisposition towards allergies and infections because her liver may not be wanting to do its job all the way. It may need some ongoing support and we would do food recommendations there and we might do some herbal or some other supplement recommendations. We also know that the liver plays key roles in our immune function. Now, giving this person an immune type of formulas, herbs that would support the immune system, might be a Band-Aid remedy that we could levy if that was appropriate. But uh, we might want to actually just be looking at overall, how's your body functioning? Because liver has its fingers in everybody's business right? It really does. And so we might want to do just some general liver support and let that filter through to the blood, to the lipid panel, to the digestion, to the immune system, to the hormones, because liver plays with that too, right? So we might, if we are thinking immune here, we might want to give this person golden seal because that's a really nice broad thing. It not only works on the liver, it supports the immune, it helps to get the bile flowing, it does a lot of great things for the liver. Is it the right answer for everybody? No, that's why we need to have the conversation. Constitutional iridology does not give us the ability to diagnose. I cannot look at this person's eye and say, oh my goodness, you've got elevated cholesterol, or oh my goodness, your liver's not handling iron or carbs properly. So we cannot make, make a diagnosis. We can't give disease names. But when we know that the eye is suggesting a liver predisposition, we can certainly ask questions, right? So have you noticed that in this whole thing, I've never said anything like this person is toxic? That's the old school way of doing things. This person needs to cleanse. That's the old school way of doing things. This person has a congested liver. That's the old school way of doing things. These eyes look unhealthy. I mean, heavens to Murgatroyd, right? That's the old school way of doing things. I can't tell you how many people I said that to at the beginning of my practice 35, 40 years ago. We can't possibly know the answers to any of those questions by looking at the iris alone. We have to have a conversation with the client to understand what their symptoms are and what the person is already doing for their health. And we need that context in order to do a proper iris analysis. Here's another great example. I mean, we see a lot of these beautiful blue eyes where I live, uh, predominantly a blue-eyed heritage up here. And I know there's different parts of the world where it's predominantly the dark brown eyes and some where it's the mixed eyes. This one suggests, because of how this particular line here is placed, that this person is more prone to constipation and poor energy production. However, we have to ask the client about that. Maybe this client figured that out years ago, that if they didn't get enough fiber and enough water and some exercise every day, they would be constipated. And they figured out by doing all those things, they are no longer constipated. That's brilliant. So if they figured it out, there's no need for us to harp on it. We know the predisposition is there and we can simply congratulate our client for being so body aware that they've done some really great things for themselves. This client was actually like that. This uh, was a client, she was already on uh, very, very diet aware. She ate small meals, she had lots of vegetables in her diet. She used digestive aids at, to help her stomach function better, to make sure she was breaking down her proteins and her fats and her carbs. She had no gut symptoms when she came in to see me at all. Her eyes also suggest another predisposition, and that one is to 
allergies. And so when I asked, she said, yep, she has lots of sinus symptoms and especially spring seasonal sinus symptoms. So as I looked at her eyes, I noticed that she has some things going in here and these aren't things that have cropped up. They've been in there for years. This is her inherent potential, right? They've been there for years since she was born. And it suggests that she might have a predisposition towards increased gut permeability, or as we used to call it, leaky gut syndrome, which of course is not something we would want her to have because it will increase her chances of having allergies. So with that, um, we she has no gut symptoms, which is great. And her allergies, however, do suggest that we should work on the gut. The allergies are the symptom, the gut is the root cause. So yes, I can give her herbs that will calm the symptoms down, but that's only a Band-Aid. And we need to work much more deeply than that to actually help her uh, overcome this problem to strengthen her body. After a course of perhaps using something like collagen, hello, Lynn Cat, good to see you on Instagram. Collagen, which is one of my favorite things for helping to uh, retonify the gut to close those tight junctions. Um, what we, we might find that after that, we want to go and support her digestive system with a bit of hydrochloric acid to make sure she is actually breaking her foods down properly. Her problem might be that the gut is so permeable that we're not noticing stomach issues because she has a tendency, as her eyes suggest, to having some under acid situations in the stomach. So we deal with the root of the cause, the root of the problem, and sometimes that will reveal other things that also need to be supported. But we are always looking at the context, at this with the context of the eye and an understanding of what the client's symptoms are, what the client's inherent potentials are, what her family history is, and what she's doing for herself right now. Here is another client. This is that dark brown eye we were talking about earlier, that you might live in an area where there are a lot of dark brown eyes. And some people think brown eyes, the dark brown eyes are really hard to read. Oh my goodness, there is so much information in a dark brown eye. This is a woman, she's in her mid fifties and she's really got her diet figured out very well. Like I wanna live with her, her diet's that good. She's got a very holistic lifestyle, which is absolutely fabulous, but she's got hot flashes. So her eyes took me in two different directions that I needed to ask her about. The first one was about her nervous system. Again, we've got these rings coming around here, which suggests that she functions primarily in a parasympathetic responding system. And that means the adrenal glands likely have had some abuse over the years because she's lived for 50 some odd years. Our adrenals have all had abuse if we've lived more than a minute, right? And so I asked her what she does to regenerate, how she handles stress, and are there any symptoms of stress? And she says, yeah, you know, she's learned to meditate. She goes for walks. She knows that if she's under stress, she needs to slow down and just focus on the situation at hand and do some breathing. But she also has noticed that when she gets stressed, the hot flashes get worse. That's no surprise to me. Also, she's got some suggestions here that her liver again, might want to be running the show for her. So I asked her if she was aware of any feelings of um, digestive discomfort or upset when she eats fats. She said no. And I also asked her if she has a, a habit of holding on to a grudge because that's a very liver, yeah, unbalanced liver kind of symptom. And she said no, she had learned how to let go of that and to move forward with that. So that was great. The one thing that she was doing that's not helpful for the liver or the hot flashes or the nervous system is she was drinking one cup of coffee a day. Now, when I say this, some of you are probably going to want to throw daggers at me and it's like, okay, if that's what you need to do, go for it. But I'm right. I'm right on this. And I know I'm right because I've proved it time and time again. So I suggested she do an experiment of giving up the coffee for 10 days to see what it would do. Coffee is hard on the liver. 
hard on the stomach lining, hard on the adrenal glands. It depletes your B vitamins and your vitamins. I don't care about the caffeine necessarily, but there's a lot of things that coffee does that people overlook because it's got a couple of good antioxidants in it. Those antioxidants aren't really worth it, I tell you. And so she did that. She gave up the coffee for 10 days and she saw a vast improvement. And then when she came back to see me and I asked her, so, and she told me about her improvement, I said, so what's the plan? And she said, well, you know, the coffee is really the only vice I have. It's the only thing I do that's not really good for me. And I enjoy it so much that I'm just going to keep doing my coffee. Yikes. Okay. Her choice. But there's nothing that I could do. She had proven it to herself that coffee is a key player for her. And that's where she wanted to be. My job now is to love her. Just love her and let her run her life the way she's going to. Because adding B vitamins wouldn't be enough to override the coffee. Adding calcium, adding magnesium, not going to be enough to override the coffee because coffee is just that strong. So she's got the information. She may turn around later on and decide to give up the coffee. Who knows? So how do we use iridology? We use iridology to guide our questions. I actually like to use iridology as my intake assessment. So client comes into my office, we do the hi, hello, how are you? And then I'll ask the client, what would you like my help with? and they give me their shopping list of things they want help with. Then I take photos of their eyes, and that's when I start asking them, based on their eyes, I will look at things, correlate markings to symptoms, so whether it's pigment, whether it's the way we see different shapes showing up in the eyes, whether it's where this line is sitting, or how the crinkles, I don't know if you can see these on Instagram, I think you can, how the crinkles are sitting up in the eye, you know, whether they've got a white band at the edge, whatever, I will use those markings then to guide my intake questions. What that means is that my intake questions are laser focused on my client. This isn't one of those broad questionnaires that we were all taught to use in school. You know, the ones of, that ask everything that's totally irrelevant to your client, actually. Um, but this helps me laser in so that I am really speaking to my client asking questions about my client, that's creating deep rapport very quickly. And I can do that intake portion once I've got the photos in under 20 minutes, which means I can then create their program and have their entire session done in approximately 60 minutes from hello to goodbye. So with this, um, if you're loving what you're seeing here and you want to know more, I do these free little webinars twice a week. Yahoo! If you want to know when they're happening, I'm going to invite you to hop on over to iridology.education. On that website, you're going to have a little pop-up that comes up that asks you if you want to receive uh, the download of an iris map and general information about iridology. Just opt in. That'll add you to my email list and that will make sure that you get the, the emails twice a week letting you know when these are happening. I just want to take 30 seconds with your permission, well it might be two minutes, to um, introduce to you the next round of Confident Nutritionist, the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System. We've just updated the name here. This is actually starting on October 7th. Since most people want to know the details about the course, we are going to do an information webinar on Tuesday about the program. And in there, you're going, to, uh, you're going to get the information of what you'll learn, how long the course will take, what are all the learning materials, and what is the learning support you receive. So that, again, is happening Tuesday, September 8th at 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. And if you'd like to register for that, hop on over to iridology.education slash webinar. Now here's the catch. This info webinar can take up to 100 students, but the course itself 
only has room for 10 students. And so if constitutional iridology seems like it's something that you might want to learn about, or if you've been following me for a while, as some of you have, and you, you've been waiting for this opportunity, you want to be at this webinar. Again, this webinar is Tuesday, September 8th. And you know what, I'm just seeing, it's looking like my notes are incorrect here. Let me just double check my calendar to make sure that this is actually at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, because it would not be a good idea to give you the wrong time. That would not be good at all. And calendar, wake up. Thank you. It is actually at 5 p.m., Tuesday, September 8th at 5 p.m. And again, um, in just a quick little, cap of what this course does include. It teaches holistic constitutional iridology, specifically geared towards practitioners, to help you assess your clients quickly and accurately. It's also designed to give you all of the curriculum you need so that if you choose to certify with the International Iridology Practitioners Association, that door will be open for you. It's also designed to help you begin learning how to create your client wellness programs right during your client appointments. So some of you are, I know, are nutrition practitioners and you see your client and then you go and you spend three or four hours of your own time creating a program and then you see your client again to deliver the program. Learning iridology the way I teach it will help you to create their program completely what they need to get to the next appointment right in the appointment you're with them in. So again, I encourage you to hop onto that webinar with me, get registered for it, and learn about the program. I thank you so much for being with me today. And I'm not seeing any questions come in, but I'll give it just a moment if anyone has any questions about what we talked about today or any uh, simple questions about the program that's coming up. Again, hop on over to iridology.education slash webinar to get registered for the info webinar that's happening on Tuesday. So less than a week away at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Use your time zone converter to figure out what time that is for you. And I will see you on Tuesday. Have a good week and a good weekend. I'll see you then. Bye for now.